Can you imagine having your very first song recorded by Elvis Presley? Well, that's exactly what happened to my next guest, Grammy-winning gospel legend Mylon Lefevre. Along with incredible success, Mylon has been broke and near death. He told me how he survived it all. Elvis cut my first song when I was 17. Without him. People come and say, how did you get Elvis to cut that tune? I didn't know he was going to cut that tune. I have no idea. I didn't send him any demos. I didn't. When Elvis decided he liked the tune, this is an amazing thing nobody knows. He told Colonel Tom, that was his manager, Tom Parker, he said, don't take the kids publishing. Well, I was 17 years old. I didn't know you had to publish music. I thought you just wrote it and sung it. Mylon may not have known anything about publishing music, but he sure knew how to write and sing it. Mylon's family, the singing Lefevers, is among the pioneers of Southern gospel music. I'll take you back to me, a little bitty thing. And being a member of that famous family. You know, my daddy, when I was a kid, my daddy was really a country, he was from Tennessee. So they called it Southern gospel. But when we weren't on stage, it was bluegrass. It was banjos and mandolins, and my uncle played a violin, but when he played it, it was a fiddle. fiddle. Yeah, and he could saw it in half. And when they were jamming around the house, and all their friends were musicians, so I grew up thinking, man, when I get old enough, I got to do that. Therefore, do not, do not be Is it true you got thrown out of the family business because your sideburns were too long? Yeah, they were too long for my mom and dad, and so they, uh, they fired me. Well, they gave me a choice. I mean, at that point, I was 25. I had my own home. I'd been in the Army. I had a married and I had a child. And I just decided I was old enough to decide how long my sideburns were. And so they decided to let me go start my own group. Mylon earned huge royalties from that Elvis tune and hundreds of other gospel songs he penned for artists, recordings which sold millions of copies. He formed his first rock band in Atlanta. They were the first to record contemporary Christian music, called by some Jesus Rock. But you talked about the importance of feeling the music, so you put that beat yes. into religious Christian music, a yes. secular sound in Christian music. Right. But you were just pounded for it. Pioneering is not always fun, it's not always understood, but it's part of the creative process. And I think that some of my best songs came out of my frustration that the preachers were all mad at me. We were trying to do the same thing, but I was trying to do it for a generation that couldn't relate to them and that they couldn't relate to. Mylon drifted further away from his gospel roots. He recorded and toured with some of rock and roll's biggest bands, but living the fast life nearly killed him. Drugs took over Mylon's life, and he barely survived an overdose. I'd taken every drug but birth control, you know. My life was so messed up, my marriage, I'd made literal a lot of money to where I could live and do what I wanted to, but I was miserable. One time I was in Paris and, and I got a hold of some stuff that was purer than I was used to and it almost killed me. And I called home, I thought if I can just get in touch with mama and she can pray, I'll live through this night. But I was afraid I wasn't gonna. And when I finally got in touch with mama, she prayed and I went to sleep and she got, she prayed me through a lot of rough stuff, so I'm thankful for Mama. Alive but broke, Mylon returned to his religion. He accepted a janitor's job at an Atlanta church, and he put together another band. But he says God told him to stop performing and start preaching. That was probably the hardest thing to walk away from. Some people point at people and holler at them, I don't do that. My job, I believe, is to explain what Jesus said what he did, how much he loves everybody, and give everybody, you know, revelation is just holy information. It's just what God said in his word. And people will make good decisions if they have the truth. The Bible says the truth will set you free. And I believe that it set me free. Mm -hmm. 